What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome to my builds guide and unit review of our latest Grand Hero Battle Unit, Validar. So he's a red infantry mage with Grimly Ill Text as the perfect weapon. This gives him plus 3 resistance and at start of turn, if he has got more visible resistance than the opponent, then he can inflict multiple status effects and debuffs on the foes in 3 rows and 3 columns centered on him. So this kind of range is similar to a tier 4 ploy skill and he is able to debuff the opponents for minus 6 defense and resistance debuffs and also inflict them with the panic and discord status. Discord status is something that we first saw on Summer Shamir's weapon and ever since then we have seen it in different weapons and also skills like the Ruse 4 skills. So it pretty much allows you to get even more debuffs on the enemies depending on the allies that they have in two spaces of them. And this can go all the way up to minus 5 debuff to all of their stats in the combat. So it's a pretty good status to have and panic status can be really helpful especially when you're facing any kind of visible buffs opponent. The thing with panic status is that a lot of times it is paired up with skills and weapons that check for the HP. But that is not the case here as Validar is going to be having the visible resistance check which is not really going to be that hard for him to meet because he has got base 43 resistance and this weapon also gives him extra resistance so that all helps him to easily trigger this effect and inflict the status and the debuffs on multiple opponents. And then at sort of combat, if his HP is at or above 25%, then he can get the effects in the combat. So first of all, he can inflict minus 6 attack and resistance debuff on the foe, which is really good for a bulky mage like him, and it also helps him nuke. And then he can also get the guaranteed follow-up attack, which is going to be nice if the opponent doesn't have any kind of null follow-up effect or follow-up denial effect because Validar is really slow at base 17 speed. And then finally, he has got the effect that makes him really amazing as a nuke. So he can get true damage based on the total number of penalty status effects on the foe and the foes in two spaces of the target foe multiplied by 4. So this is not counting the stat debuffs that he does from his weapon, but instead the negative status effects like panic status, discord status, guard status, ploy status, all of that. So all of those status effects are going to be helping him get the true damage and there is no maximum cap to this effect, which means that even a level 1 Validar is able to get so much true damage because of the negative status effects on the enemies that he's able to take out a level 40 opponent that has got triangle advantage because he's easily able to get upwards of 50 or even 100 true damage, which is absolutely insane when it comes to nuking. Now, the thing which is going to be stopping this is definitely going to be the damage reduction skills and those damage reduction effects. So units are going to be able to survive because of it, but many times he's able to get so much damage that even if they reduce his damage, he's still going to be doing a number on them. And of course, we do have debuff neutralization weapons, skills, and also the status, but that is not going to be enough to stop him because he's going to be counting the negative status on the allies within two spaces of you. So even if you have debuff neutralization, you also need to be three spaces away from any kind of ally so that he doesn't consider the nearby allies. So it is kind of similar to tanking Duo Sanaki or Yune in that regard. And he's going to be counting each instance of the status effects on the enemies. So for example, Panic and Discord status count as two on a singular enemy. And if they have any kind of ally near two spaces of them, then he's going to be counting Panic and Discord status yet again. And that's why his true damage can be absolutely insane and he can nuke so hard because of it. And he does have very high base attack at base 46, so it's not like he's lacking when it comes to the raw power. You'll have to watch out for debuff cleansing effects like Freyr or the recovery skills because they can just get rid of the debuffs and also any kind of negative status effect. And there's also harsh command plus. So those are the things that you'll have to watch out for, but for the most part, He's going to be nuking really well because of this weapon and if you build him up well with many of the tier 4 skills that he can have access to and we've also got a bunch of units who have access to a lot of negative status effects so that all can help him get a lot of damage. He can also be compared to the other free to play red mages that we've got and he absolutely blows Marla out of the water. Even though Marla might have few points of extra resistance over Validar, Validar still has the perfect weapon which enables his amazing nuking and also he can support his allies and he has got as much defense as a max investment resplendent Sophia. So he's incredibly min-maxed 
and even if you're going to be comparing him to some of the premium units. So I'm really excited to see what Book 8 has got for us in terms of the free to play units because Validar is just the start and that is an insane start with this kind of weapon. Hilda is also another unit that you can compare him to because she did have the dominance in her weapon which allowed her to get a lot of true damage but Validar has got the next level true damage so he does eclipse her a lot when it comes to nuking. Unfortunately when it comes to the skills he doesn't really bring too much and then for whatever reason they've got Brash Assault 3 on him when he already has the guaranteed follow up attack in his weapon. So this Lord B skill does not make any kind of sense. It would have been a lot better if he had some kind of Rue skill. And then he has got Attack Ploy which does work with his weapon but this could have been the perfect time to give us the tier 3 version of Fatal Smoke on a free to play unit. As far as his IVs are concerned, I feel like the best IV for him is going to be resistance because of the nature of his weapon and the fact that he has got a resistance check and the optimal builds that are going to be running with Validar is going to be appreciating the resistance boon. So if you're going to be spending trade fruits on him then do prioritize resistance and if you plan on spending an ascended floret on him then you can try and ascend his attack acid so that he can nuke even harder but defense is also something that you can do if you want to take more of the bulkier route. Overall, Validar is easily one of the best free to play units that we have ever gotten because his stat spread is so min max that it is unbelievable for a free to play unit. And he also has amazing nuking potential with his weapon, and he also has good mix bulk, which we don't really see that much on these kinds of slow mages. A lot of times they just have high resistance, but Validar here does have much, much better physical bulk than many of the mages. And of course his preferred weapon is the reason why he's so good because you can get ridiculous amount of true damage for nuking by having the negative status effects on the enemies and he can also help support his allies when he's not going to be nuking himself by debuffing the enemies and inflicting them with a panic and discord status. If you're going to be investing in Validar then he can easily be used in all of the in-game modes because he's going to be crushing the enemies which are not optimized to take him on and of course in the PvP game modes. He's going to be useful in Arena and Ether Raids, Arena Assault and even in Summoner Duels. Even though the range of his weapon is not the biggest for Summoner Duels but still it can be worked out on many of the maps. And he's got amazing roll compression by having access to nuking, having the support and also because he's an infantry unit he can run a lot of the infantry only skills and also run the damage reduction piercing skills which are the one thing which he needs because like I said damage reduction is the thing which stands in your way when you have got this much true damage. Still if you have got a lot of insane mage nukes then you might not be incentivized to invest in him and when it comes to this game Awakening the roster of many people is just going to be really strong because we have got insanely busted Awakening units. So when it comes to limited battles and stuff that takes Awakening into the account then you probably already have the units for it. Still, you know, Validar is amazing with the true damage that he brings to the table. And even if you're going to be building him up on a budget, then you can simply give him HP resistance too from a 4 star Natasha. And this is going to be helping him have a better visible resistance, especially at this kind of low investment. And then for Slot B, you can just try and run any kind of debuffing skill or any kind of supportive skill. Attack resistance link can work out and you can just run the Squad A Sacred Seal, which can boost up your resistance attack and HP. So make sure to upgrade squad is BU because that is going to be the main secret seal of Validar. And for his special you can definitely try and run Glimmer or Iceberg and because he has got very high attack and he can debuff the opponent's resistance by a lot, Glimmer does become a pretty nice special that he can run. And then if you're going to be investing more in him then it's probably better to wait until we get attack speed ploy 3 because that is his best lotsy skill. It has got perfect synergy with his Grim Leal text which already debuffs the opponent's defense and resistance and then you can debuff the remaining stats with a ploy skill. Now you can just run any kind of ploy skill if you don't really want to wait for it because any kind of ploy skill is going to be amazing on him because it disables the grand strategy of the enemies and has got the same range as his preferred weapon so you're going to be debuffing even more stats and the tier 4 ploy skills also allow you to inflict the enemy with the exposure status and also the ploy status. So the exposure status in itself gives you the extra true damage which is really good and with this kind of weapon you want to have as many negative status effects on the enemies and that's why ploy becomes an amazing slotty skill that you definitely want to run on Validar if you're going to be seriously investing in him. And special spiral 4 could be run so that you can get even more true damage and it does allow you to have the full 
damage reduction piercing, which is really good in case any kind of high damage reduction unit annoys him. And attack resistance finish can give you the healing and gain even more true damage. And it synergizes really well with this kind of build. And because he's an infantry unit, he's able to take advantage of a lot of these skills, which, uh, you know, someone like T-Time Lasithia, for example, cannot really, you know, do because she's a flying unit. So you should definitely try and run some kind of damage reduction piercing skill when it comes to your slot B. If Special Spiral 4 is not something you want to run, then Magical Null Follow-Up could be an option that you can also run. And Still Water is going to be the skill that you can also run in slot A so that you can increase your visible resistance. Unfortunately, it does decrease your defense, which is not the best thing. But if you're trying to have super high visible resistance, then it could be an option. But most of the time, I would say that at this kind of max investment with max merges and dragon flowers and trade fruits, he already has very high resistance, as you can see with the previous build. So it's not really needed, but it can be an option if you want to trigger your ploy skills and debuffs against literally any kind of unit in the game. So yeah, you could run that and then magical null follow up from Brave Soren or um, Haether could also be an option, even though he's not a very fast unit. The main usage of magical null follow up here is going to be for the damage reduction shredding so that you can cut through the damage reduction of the enemies, which is really important, especially when you have the opportunity to do that as an infantry unit. So it is going to be an option if you don't have the tempo 4 skills, which we don't really have too many of. The attack resistance variant is only present on Veil as of making this video. So till then it can be an option, but ultimately I feel like attack resistance tempo 4 is something that is better than magical not follow up because it allows you to have the full tempo effect, which means that you're not going to be having any kind of trouble against the guard opponents and the enemies are not going to be charging their specials. And the tempo skill has got really good synergy with Fire Flood Boost 3, which has got the guard effect in both phases. So it is also a top tier skill that you can run, but it is going to be pretty rare to get. And if you want to go all the way for utilizing his thought B for debuffing, then any kind of sabotage skill can be used so that you can have the sabotage status on the enemy along with the ploy status and a lot of negative status are going to be helping him do incredible amount of damage. And then if you want to use him more like a tank instead of a nuke, then that could also be done because he does have a lot more physical bulk than a lot of the mages and his overall mixed bulk is really good. So you can run close reversal and run special spiral 4 so that he can retaliate back with flare which is going to be helping you heal up HP and it can also help you destroy the enemies with his high damage output. So this is definitely something that he can do even though it is not the most optimal route. And when it comes to the attune skills, there are not too many that I would say are like a must have. I guess now attack with echo could be something you can run, but it's not necessarily a thing that is must needed on Validar as of making this video. Finally, when it comes to the competitive game modes, he can definitely be used in Aetherite's offense with the new tier 4 Ruse skills. And it doesn't really matter too much which Ruse skill you run because, um, you know, it is mainly there for having the schism status on the enemies so that they do not have the triangle attack with Bridal Catria or dual strike with Winter Cordelia. And even though there is a bit of an overlap with his weapon and the Roost 4 skill with the Discord status, it is still really helpful to have as a supportive unit for Aetherweight's offense. And whenever we get attack speed ploy, he's gonna be an amazing support unit who can debuff all stats of the enemies. He's basically like a walking school structure which can debuff the enemies for all of their stats and inflict even more negative status on them to support your tanking ally. So he can be nice there, but just don't use him in Astro Season because Freyr will cleanse all of the status effects from his weapon and also the ploy skill. The only status effects he cannot cleanse are from the, you know, Ruse skill, but still it is not worth using him in the Astro Season because of his presence and he's a lot more suited for the Light Season. You can also use him in Aetherite's defense as a nuke and Remote Mirror could be a skill that you can run in the slot A so that you can have better survival. And this way you can really annoy the opponents by living through their attack and then having the tempo for skill for piercing through the damage reduction and also just making sure that they don't use any kind of breath sacred seal or breath effects. So it can be really annoying for many tanks because Validar is annoyingly bulky and he can be a nuisance with the true damage that he can get. So it can be really hard for the opponent. And for your Aether Raid's defense, he can be the unit to run the ploy skill and get rid of the grand strategy and bonus doubler status of the enemies. And then finally, he could also be used in Arena 
Even though he's not as high scoring as Fargus or Cyril, he's still an amazing arena unit because of the utility that he brings from the debuffs and also the support that he can provide. So this really allows you to easily take the bonus kills with your units and the long range debuffing is amazing when it comes to arena. Not a lot of arena units are going to be having more resistance than him. So you can again run the ploy skill which is the best lotsy skill and tempo with fire flood boost is going to be really great in arena because a lot of units are going to be having some kind of special acceleration for example so that can be helpful and then flare is going to be the expensive special of choice for the high scoring i hope that we can soon get attack speed ploy 3 which is his perfect slotsy skill and i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously and if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a youtube member and for more fave videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because youtube sub boxes are about as functional as marla after seeing validar make his entrance so with that, i'll see you guys next time thank you so much for watching and have a great day